round one try. Okay, we're live. Hey guys, welcome to Future Hack 2018. I am here at 50 Milk Street in Boston, and so are all of these kids and a few judges. I'm one of the judges today, and I'm actually standing here with Momina Alawala. Go ahead. Momina is going to be pitching with her team, and let's see. Let's get Joseph over here. So that's Joseph over there. Yep. And this is what it looks like for those of you who have never been to the kitchen. Yeah. <laughs> Camera. We can't put you on film? Why? We did. Hi, say hi, Too you're alive. Too late. You're alive. <laughs> Let me go get it. Thank you. Yeah, uh, get the jump. Okay. Are you Amy? I can uh, I can put it on this table and then do it like this. Should I keep it live right now? Uh, it's already live. That's okay. Keep it live. Okay. Do that for me. Can I take? I could. I can come off of this. I think so. I think we should go right by now. Uh, I can do it off of that. You can move the. So it has table because this is too wobbly so no. unless you're okay with it being wobbly. Why don't we put something underneath it? Yeah just put something. Yeah can you help with that? So, so try and put it under that light. Yeah, good thinking. Thank you. 
Uh, yeah, Facebook Live. Yeah. Is that the uh, so they might not have another bedroom. Yeah, do you want to put it on now? Yeah. Uh, yeah, it's my age. Okay. 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 to start the Future Hack Innovators Bootcamp 2018 Session 1 Final Pitch Day. Yay. All right. Um, we're going to Facebook Live this whole thing and see what happens. Okay. Who got more than 20 minutes of sleep last night? All right. A few. That's Wait. way too much. That's way too much? Cool. Um, every year, it's a lot of blood and sweat and tears. Well, mostly yes, sweat and tears, not much blood. And it's the moment that kids work so hard to make something come true that was not available before. So we're very lucky to witness this moment 
and have a large group of Future Hack family. Give hands to Future Hack Junior. And Future Hack Session 2. Gonna be ready to do this in a couple days? Well, that's the point here, right? <laughs> okay, let me introduce the judges. We're very lucky to have, um, everybody has met Amy Carrier. Why don't we have them introduce themselves a little sure. bit and give, give a little bit of background and then uh, Milena will also like to um, give you guys a few words from uh, Junior Achievement uh, Worldwide. Um, uh, so let's start with Amy. Is it on? Can you hear me? Yes. Yay! Hi guys! Hi! How are you doing? <laughs> hey, you know what? We've all been there, and you will look back on this experience as one of the coolest things you ever did. So even though you're tired and some of you are a little nervous right now, you're going to do great. You're going to do so much better than you think, and I'm already proud of you. And I have loved talking to so many of you and connecting with you before I even came in here today. So, my name is Amy Carrier. I am an expert in the space of teaching entrepreneurship to teenagers and young adults. And I built a program just like Future Hack back in 2006 and taught it inside a high school and ran it from 2006 to 2011, right here in Boston. And so I have been there, I have been in the trenches with students your age, and I know what you're going through because I've coached hundreds of kids through this. And trust me, you're going to do amazing. I just know it. And the world is so going to benefit from your ingenuity, your creative ideas, and I'm super excited to see them. So I'm happy to be here. Thank you, Joseph John. Thank you, everyone who put this together. Thank you to my awesome soul sister, fellow judges. And um, do you want me to say anything else about me? Um, no. No? That's, that's good. Why don't we have Daggy next? Okay. Yes. All right. So I'm working with you? All right, cool. Uh, yeah. Oh, uh, I Is it showing? Uh, but yeah, anyway, so I, um, I've been working with startups here in Boston for, for a couple of years now. Um, I started out um, uh, at a company uh, up in, up just outside Boston that was working on uh, flying cars. Uh, we're called Terrafugia, and I was helping us uh, kind of helping that company with raising money, mostly in China. We ended up getting acquired by uh, the largest privately owned uh, car company in China, which is pretty fun. Uh, now, hopefully, they're going to make some flying cars, which I'm excited about. And at the moment, I'm working at a company called Tive up in Cambridge uh, that's focusing on supply chain visibility. So, we're helping manufacturers uh, track goods in their supply chain. Uh, so, it's been an interesting uh, sort of uh, contrast for me. Uh, to have those different experiences. Uh, I'm really excited to, to be here and to, to hear about all of your awesome ideas. So thanks. So, good morning, everyone. Good morning. I'm really happy to be here because I know I've been around with you um, in a different role, but uh, at the moment, I am stepping in the shoes of somebody else. Uh, so I am representing um, the organization which is called Junior Achievement. So it's like you juniors uh, worldwide. And it is a big organization all over the world, uh, which is in 121 countries. So it's on all of the continents. This really makes it uh, really global in this sense. And Amazing enough, it has kids of your age in so many countries that are trying to develop their projects and they're working for one year on their ideas in really making them happen. And what we have, we have this very cool program that is called Mini Company. 
So they call it mini company, but it's a real company, okay? Uh, mini company in the sense that it, it's little people walking in big man's shoes. Um, and they get to do, um, they get to uh, form a team, uh, develop their idea, and then work on it <coughs> with people from uh, different companies and their business mentors, as well as with other students. We even have these joint projects where they can work with students from another country on, uh, in, let's say, students in Europe work in Asia, and then with students from Latin America. And they get to, at the end, really come up with a product or service which they make happen. So we have had students that just, uh, you know, who invented uh, this little uh, capsule uh, that actually is created of biomaterials. And then they give this capsule to the farmers to attract the bees because you know the bees are getting extinct. I mean, they're disappearing from our planet. And the bees are responsible for the nature. And without bees, we and our uh, forests and our fields, are go and, and as well as our food, is going to get lost. So we, are really, we really need to do something about it. And students like you are developing products like this, and they are making it happen in their own communities or internationally. So this is just one example. So we are very happy when I met Joseph in January uh, of this year. Time really flies. I thought it's been long, uh, much more, much longer than this. Um, uh, and he was uh, telling me about this opportunity of the future hack. I thought, wow, what a cool idea. We can actually put this together and we can work together to have to give the chance of students who come here actually to after that go through a similar program in their schools in their communities in something that is really nice about uh, uh, working with our organization is that you can act you actually get to do this in the school while you are students so this is part of your uh, subjects, I mean, I mean of, of the things that you do at school, and you don't have to do the tests, you don't have to really rush and hurry for uh, delivering, you know, on those. What you get to do is to work with your friends on something that you like, and then you get to go around, present it, and people evaluate your performance and how well you do on this. So. This is really about developing skills that are relevant for your life, for what you want to be, for how you want to be later on. And it is something that you do both as as, as learning process, but also as fun. So it, it's really amazing that uh, we, through this and through with Future Hack, we can actually let uh, and give the opportunity of a lot of students around the world to work together and to feel uh, really free and exploring in developing their ideas, in playing with the new ideas and in making it work. Thank you so much. Thank you so very much. So looking forward yeah. to be part of this. Okay, so um, well, we'd like to thank uh, the Cambridge Innovation Center uh, for providing this space. This is fantastic. Um, and uh, uh, I know all the, the whole, all the teams have been up all hours of the night uh, working just feverishly on their, uh, on their projects. Um, you, you guys are amazing. Um, thank you so much. And uh, you guys are going to do great. This is, this is your opportunity to, to shine. And you know, don't worry about the few hours of sleep. We're going to have a great celebration tonight, OK? So, so and you're, you're amongst friends, OK? All of, this, all of these are your friends and family. We're all here to support you. It's going to be great. All right. Um, let me announce the judging criteria. Each team, we have eight teams, and each team will have seven minutes to present and just about two minutes, give or take, for comments and Q&As. 
And the judging criteria, as we have officially announced before, are problem fit with solution, innovativeness, team chemistry, presentation quality, and empathy score, which means is it funny, is it emotional, or it has a great story. The value of the great story has been communicated with all the future Hack family for this entire time, so we're looking forward to hear all of them. All right, without further ado, let us uh, to tell you what is the order of the pitches. Okay, let me invite the first pitch team, Team Virto. team name is Vianto. My name is Shuhei. And my name is Betty from Shanghai, China. I, I come from Tokyo and we are here to, um, present, we're, it is a great pleasure to present us, present you guys with our idea. Our first our presentation will be first the problem, then the solution, and, and finally the business model. So let us first begin with the problem. Now, please imagine yourself as a teenager who's young, lively, fun, interesting, and open-minded. You're always in the spotlight of people, and you love talking to people and come for, have, have interesting conversation with them. However, you move to a totally different kind of country. You try to talk to different kinds of people from all around the world. However, you have realized that all of your, they cannot understand you. All your funness and all your jokes and all your thoughts were lost. Why? Because you only know how to speak formal and sometimes cannot express your feelings with those formal words that you have learned in your textbook. These here, this could miss, make a great mistake because we only learn formal words that probably is not daily used. And this is a very big problem. Students to laugh all around you, and you might not even understand what they are talking about. You feel left out. And this is the most important time of your life. It's college, it's high school, it's time for you to make connections. However, you are left out. Yes, it might not be a live or die situation, but being singled out when you're such a young and lively kid is a terrible, terrible thing to do, to have. What Betty told us is that learning the language barrier and so the language barrier and the culture barrier is totally different. So learning foreign languages in school and learning culturals, cultural differences is a very different thing. Can you pick it up? In fact, one in four Chinese students in Ivy League universities drop out of college because of cultural differences. It's not that they, can, they can't speak English, but it's that because they don't understand the American um, college and they feel uncomfortable, uncomfortable about, it, about it. So now, this is the solution. Um, first of all, we, we use crowdsourcing and AI self-learning technology. Uh, our team would like to support them in a case-by-case situation in speaking, um, empowering through advanced technology. There, um, it's called Natural Language Pro Processing Group at Stanford University, NLP. And this, is, this project is even before season one. 
they worked on our rhythms that allow computers to process and understand human language. And we would use this technology and put it and develop it into our app, app and make students to be able to translate something that they might not be able to do on an academic translator. Let me reiterate. Oh. Let me reiterate the point, point that you're focusing totally on vocality. So culture, dif culture differences um, is about all about community. Even if it's different universities, the culture is so different. That is that is why you're focusing on vocality, using the um, artificial intelligence, machine learning, with the trending bloggings to make this um, um, unique database of each community. Our app has blogging abilities, and this is a very special. This is a very special highlight of our product. I was just remember the story I told. It was me when I was only ten. I was just an innocent little girl. I was um, isolated in my in, in America school because I did not understand what their native language, and I didn't understand a lot of language. So, however, with our app, with our blogging ability, we can have different kinds of people from all different kinds of universities, countries, cities, to blog about their own trends and to blog about their, their interests and hobbies. So by that, we can have social media, which people can make friends online also, which this is a very important thing that no other translator or other apps can actually do and they actually use. So now finally, let us um, explain the business model. So our target is, as I mentioned before, college students. Um, and when we when we say freshman mentality, because freshman does d has no, no knowledge about the universities and stuff, they tend to just go with other other people. So targeting freshman p um, students will enable us to um, aim blocks, um, um, bulk, or oh, aim um, customers in block, um, bulk. Um, and when I say international and domestic, um, it, the, commu the community co um, culture d differs in each university, in each community. So it's not about nationality, it's about community, as I mentioned before. So the revenue sources, as, let me say as, it's not just random ads that, that are annoying, but relevant ads to support freshman students. Example, insurance, student learning essentialities, and we think that we can aim for $0.5 per each um, download for ads, and for data, because our um, aim is, well, university students, especially high um, top grade universities, these data about what kind of trends uh, the universities are uh, have, or like you know what kind of um, things that the university students are interested in, will have immense um, impact or well, um, value on these companies. So let's do the math. In 2018, Ivy League freshmen um, were um, 22,592 students. So our aim is 50 uh, 50 percent download rate, and this it's 1.5 dollar per download. We can estimate that at least we can get $33,888 um, at the startup. And since we're going to go up with not only Ivy League, but you know, MIT, other uni universities as well, we can estimate a large amount of, um, of revenue. To wrap all these up, we have to identify that language is some very big and major part of our daily lives. However, they have been changing. So we need to fit and be suitable and to develop ourselves with those changes. So we believe that our product, Fiondo, can have a huge potential over the, all the crowds and potential customers because they have a, we have a strong social mission to help and help those students who have trouble fitting in and talking to others. So please, join us with our trip and join us to help us con conquer language barrier throughout through the entire world. And by that, we can pull the world together and make it a better place for the future. Thank you. Especially sort of powerful about your presentation was how 
you started with sort of inviting everyone to imagine themselves in the position of the people you're trying to help. And it could be, as you said, this is, this is a problem you've personally experienced, but you didn't start by saying, here's my problem, how we're gonna fix it for me. It's, here's something that everyone can imagine and relate to, and I think that makes it really uh, sort of a powerful presentation and a powerful sort of uh, rhetorical tool for uh, inviting everybody to understand what, um, you know, how this is going to add value. Thank you. Um, yeah, so really well done. Um, one question I have on the sort of business model front. Um, I completely understand how this is going to add a lot of value for the international students. What do you, how do you hope to encourage uh, sort of the, the native English speakers, the Americans in this, on the, in this product to contribute content? What is your um, sort of strategy for getting them involved? Oh, so um, there's, so basically for uh, international students, like there's like a, um, a session, a one week session from the university starts where um, you, um, seniors in the university teach them how it, how it works. And oh, oh, it's sort of a similar kind of thing. So we, um, we encourage well, um, senior university students to, um, well, to participate in the, in the trend of bloggings so that we can um, manually um, gather all the data of these um, unique com um, database of communities so that, well, um, and this will, um, and since, yeah, so, um, so it's not, this is not about international and um, domestic, it's about the difference in community. So um, we're inviting all the um, people who have experience in living in the community, or, or in this case universities, to contribute to the blogging for the, um, um, the crowd. Thank you. Um, hi guys. Hi. I would like to see the rest of your team Yes. And I would like to know what they contributed to this. Okay. Um, can we have Toby and Abdul? Thank you. And while they're coming up, <coughs> could you well. tell us the, what's the meaning of the name? Oh, it's like, please. Um, it's Latin. Uh -huh. um, so, um, we wanted to connect the words. Con um, come, come this way. We won't bite. <laughs> We, uh, we wanted to connect the words, well, connect and like, uh -huh. and connect is, um, um, I, don't, I don't know how to pronounce, but it's- Can you all stand up against the, there yeah. we go. Okay, and thank you. It means, um, you, um, it's Yungo, I don't know. So our, our name is Yungo, right? Yungo. So, and Yungo. Yungo. I, Yungo? I don't know, Yungo. I, I think it's Yungo. Yungo. I think it's Yungo. Uh, means um, connect. Okay. And Vita means so I want to you know, like connect. So you just created a word. Yeah. Great. So, yeah. It's, it's about con oh, connecting others with mutual understanding. So have the. I think that's them. super cool. My recommendation with that, when you introduce a product that has a, a name, like it's, it looks like Biunto. Yeah. yeah Biunto. Um, but I had a hard time figuring out how to pronounce it, and most of the time, what happens is your audience is totally focused on what is that word and how would I say it, then they're not listening to you. So my recommendation is if you do something like that, beneath it you can actually write the phonetic um, pronunciation and you can look online to learn how to do that. But that helps to answer the question that your audience automatically has. And it, it would be cool if you say, you know, Latin, you know, our interpretation of a Latin word. Just say that right from Okay, so uh, would you uh, and uh, tell us what you guys, um, what, what each of your jobs were on the team? Um, okay, so uh, uh, he is Abdullah uh, from Pakistan. Can and you speak? Yeah. Yes. He will speak. Yes. <laughs> Hi, my name is Abdullah. I am from Pakistan. And I, um, we were giving four, four options. So uh, I picked Hatcher. I am the team Hatcher, but so I just need the the back end for the, kind of the technology first. Yeah. No, no, the Hatcher. The Hatcher. Yeah. Oh. Can you tell us what a Hatcher is? Uh, as far uh, as far as I know, it's uh, the guy who's working on the back end, the back stage of the whole uh, company. Well, we 
had a really hard time on the script yesterday with me and Betty, and he was like, well, it's not about the script, it's about working together. You, you know. Wonderful. Yeah. Good. Good. And I'd like to know everybody else, and then I have one big question for you. Okay. okay. Um, uh, I'm Toby uh, from uh, China, Shanghai, and I'm the head girl in this team. Um, technology. Thank you, Toby. So uh, I'm a little confused, and oh, I so really no, our time is up. So okay, let's, I really yeah. wanted to see the video that you put so much time into. So for the audience, they have a wonderful marketing that is a video that illustrates the problems that happen when there's a gap in communication. So, you know, when you have something like that that actually tells the story for you, make sure you fit it into your seven minute time, okay? You hear that? Um, you guys, the next few teams, if you have a video, you know, that's good, then uh, I strongly suggest that you use it because yeah. you've spent a lot of time on it. Yeah. Okay, thank you. let's, uh, thank you very much. Out Next. Just to give um so just to give a little bit of background, um, we have uh, almost about sixty students from um, seventeen different countries. Uh, almost none of them uh, English is their first language. So um, it, and, uh, so just imagine like trying to do something that's not even your first language and try to, so, so we, we uh, really applaud them for their courage. Yeah, yeah. And I was going to say that. <laughs> <laughs> okay. um, yes, so the next team, please introduce a, the whole team, okay? So the name of the team, uh, your names and where you're from, and then uh, go on with the presentation. Good morning, everybody. Uh, my name is Momona Lavara, and I'm from Pakistan, and we are Ecotech. Hi, my name is Joe, and I'm from India. I'm Coco from Japan. Hi, I'm Aditi from India. I'm Roger from China. Chain. And so we want to 
wanted to change. We wanted to solve the chain. So let me tell you one personal story. So I, when I, so you can see the picture. Huh? So as you, like most of us are living, are staying in non-air conditioned um, university dorms, which is very hot. And in the first week, we didn't even have a bed. And to be honest, I was burning and it, it was so hot. And that was like literally like sauna. And I felt like I was in like, I was like bread in the oven or something. So I was really angry <laughs> about the fact that it is so hot in, the, in our dorm. So this is the reason why we are, we are so fired up with this. Because, because we wanted to solve the high temperature that I said I mentioned a while ago. And we, the high temperature is caused by pollution. So we wanted to solve these two problems. And also to add, we also want to solve the lack of electrical, electrical <laughs> infrastructure in remote areas. <coughs> so, and high electricity bills. Like, lately bills are like expensive. Now moving on to the boring business side, uh, 
our estimated cost of production of green corn is about $58. And the total sales of cooling devices in the world in 2017 alone were about $98 billion. And we estimate that uh, the total market potential of our product by 2025 to be about $2.1 trillion. And we aim to uh, sell, uh, uh, we aim to donate one air, uh, we aim to donate one uh, air conditioner for everyone sold to the people in need in the developing countries. And our competitors are uh, companies like Honeywell and Samsung, and we want to disrupt the whole market. And we wanted to donate uh, to the needy people in the developing countries because we as a team were brought together by a common goal to make a positive impact in this world. And there's one more thing. Most of you guys may think that green car, the air condition, is cool because it can run without electricity, right? But in my point of view, that is too small. What if we design it into a bigger and more sexy? <laughs> so let me, ladies and gentlemen, let me introduce you the green corn system. And this is the building with the green corn system. Inside this building, you can see there's many pipes. It's exactly the same structure we just mentioned in our AC products. And of course, it can cool down itself, just like we found our mother nature. By the way, it's, this building will be built by following the LEEDS standard. But that's not the point. Let's imagine you just stand in that building, and around you is the, the beautiful artificial structures. It can not only make your room, make your house look cool, but it also provides you a fantastic environment. But this, as new youth now, I can promise you, you won't be care about the electricity bill. And just like, you can feel how beautiful the mother nature is. And this is the whole things we want to share with you guys. Thank you for listening, ladies and gentlemen. I want to congratulate you truly because you have a very daring vision and uh, it, it seemed like you put a lot of thinking and effort into this and um, I think it's actually something very much doable. So this is 
you are putting this concept of how this works into a building of a new type. That's why it's sexy, right? Yeah. Good. <laughs> I know. Green, sexy, and all of those good things. Um, and then, how did you distribute uh, the roles in your group? Who was working on what? Because, of course, the team is very important in, if you are to carry out a project like this. So, I will walk through to the business side and the research to the target market and educate the cost of production. <coughs> So impressed by all of this. Uh, just, I have one quick question, and, I, uh, and it is: How are you going to sell this? Whom are you going to go to first? team to come up and stand. backpack in the whole history of human evolution. <laughs> for our awesome team, uh, we will offer you the backpack for the next generation. What do you people use for uh, commuting to school or workplaces? I myself go to school by riding the train for about 40 minutes. Now, uh, why do you think I became of this? This? This, um, okay, what, is, what do you think I became of this the moment I hopped into the train one day? Uh, what do you think uh, was the case? Was it because I forgot my homework? Uh, was it because I hopped into another train? Or uh, was it because um, I suddenly wanted to uh, go to the bathroom? Well, uh, in this case, uh, I forgot to uh, charge my phone the, um, uh, yesterday, and yeah, uh, that is really disastrous, as uh, you guys can probably know. Uh, uh, I mean, like no one, absolutely no one, could uh, probably survive without a charged smartphone in their hand, right? And yeah, actually, I can't really uh, believe the old people have like lived without a smartphone. <laughs> and, yeah, only, only you. Uh, only using like uh, pocket, uh, pocket beepers and uh, flip phone. Yeah, I can believe that. But uh, anyways, 
uh, in order to stay alive, I just needed to charge it in school. And guess what? I was actually, I was actually scolded for, uh, by the teacher for plugging the charger into the outlet. Uh, he yelled at me about stealing electricity, uh, but I was wondering, why do I have to be called for a thief for just uh, plugging my uh, smartphone into the outlet? And this little thought de uh, developed into a tremendous problem. In that situation, we invented infinity pack. So what is that infinity pack? Now, as he said before, an infinity pack is one of the back pack, uh, which, which has this colorful solar panels, a vibration generator, wireless charge, and customizing. So, um, so we can charge smartphones or devices from this back pack. So um, we're going to explain the details of the full um, the back function. One, solar panels. Um, these days, um, it, um, you know, not only the black stuff solar panels, but also um, there is a really colorful the solar panels. So our backpack has a really um, color variation. So that means is our backpack is uh, more fashionable than usual ones. Um, furthermore, um, our solar panel is, uh, is really flexible and you know, soft and vulnerable. So um, this so colorful solar panels can be fit on the box. Um, the right down is like this. Second, vibration generation uh, generated power. Um, this is one of the uh, electric generation system, uh, which is called vibration uh, generated a uh, generated system. Um, you know, the, when you are walking um, on the street, your backpack um, can be uh, shaked by using that the shaking, and um, uh, we can get the uh, electric power by the vibration. And also, the size is really small and it's very light, so it's also uh, going to fit on a backpack. Third, charging. Um, you know, the, as, as I said, the, by using the one what, the solar panels and the vibration system, we can get lots of, we can get some uh, much um, electric power. By using that power, we can charge our smartphone by only this backpack. Um, and furthermore, uh, this backpack has the wires full, uh, this backpack has the pockets full wires charging. So that means you guys don't need the cores, um, the waste cores, but if you if you want to use it, you can use a USB cores. So lastly, the customizing. So maybe I think it's the most interesting part, um, because uh, when I uh, when we um, thought that products, we uh, we thought that you know even if uh, we use the colorful solar panels, even if if we design the cool design. Um, Maybe some of people don't want, want don't want this backpack because you know there's lots of people. Everyone has different taste and everyone has different thinking. But by using the infinity backpack, uh, infinity packet, uh, you can attach the several function on your own backpack. So that means is that um, users are able to both the fashionable and use the function. And I'm gonna explain the target audience. Uh, the P, uh, our audience, our persona is like this guy. Oh, who is that? <laughs> who is this guy? Well, maybe you don't know, but uh, he is one of the best my teammate for the real time. <laughs> uh, he's from Japan, and his school life is really, really hectic. Um, so our target audience is the students who commit by uh, any trust politician, um, like the bus or train, and students who can't charge on their phones outside. And finally, uh, for the students who really, really want to use smartphones. Exaggeration we have with the most badass, 
uh, invention in the world at this moment. <laughs> and yeah, that's obvious, right? But uh, can we actually uh, compete with other companies and win over them? Uh, uh, also, how are we going to sell this product? Uh, first of all, I want you to look at uh, these two uh, com uh, companies that uh, we think as rivals. These two are pretty much the only uh, companies that came up in, on search engine, uh, both, uh, which is, one is Japanese and one is uh, a uh, American company. Uh, in addition to the units of the number of uh, companies, uh, these two are just uh, both uh, minor little companies. Uh, we think that uh, with our own, uh, more high-tech products, uh, it will be uh, easy to take the whole market of solar power back. Uh, also, when you look at the products they are making, you can see they are totally uh, getting the wrong thing. They don't. They just don't seem to know uh, that adults don't get uh, that uh, adults don't get that fascinated towards new gadgets compared to teenagers. Uh, when thinking about sales, I'm uh, sure people uh, will think. Uh, well, uh, yeah. Well, uh, by the way, uh, some people might just think that. Uh, why don't we just use mobile batteries? But what if you actually just forget to uh, charge the mobile battery? And also, if you even have a charged mobile battery, uh, wouldn't it be like easier to uh, uh, have something uh, uh, to use something that you always uh, use it daily? And yeah, that's why we think it's better than the mobile battery. All right, thank you so much. This is really awesome. Um, I love your presentation. I also especially love what you did just at the end there with raising this question that was actually exactly what was in my mind was why is this any better than a mobile battery? And so by raising that question, it kind of you know deletes it from sort of any concern. Um, I think the only one sort of small tech, uh, technical question I have is you mentioned you have solar panels and you also have this uh, power that's generated by the vibration of the backpack. Why do you have two different power sources? So because uh, sometimes when you go to urban area, you just stay in buildings or behind shade of them, so solar panel will be useless. So charge on the move is always a uh, better secondary solution. Thanks. Um, so how are you going to make this work? Are you going to make it yourself? Or are you going to turn to somebody to help you produce it? Did you think of this? Uh, well, not really deeply, but um, well, well you know, just your thoughts. How how were you thinking well, we, to we don't put really have like uh, specific knowledge, uh, like really, you know, detailed knowledge about the uh, technology. So uh, I'm always thinking of like you know, uh, giving like telling uh, the people about the uh, <coughs> this idea. But, but you said that there were others that were making something like this or not on the market. Oh uh, yeah, there's uh, ones that uh, involve like solar energy, um, uh, but we thought that uh, it wasn't really, you know, uh, for teenagers, which, you know, we, we thought that it's, you know, this, this thing is more like for teenagers who have like... So maybe you can energy. go and talk to them and ask them yeah, yeah, yeah. that you have this, maybe to customize some of these products. Yeah. All right. Maybe just to tell us on the team who did what. I, okay. um, I did the, the design. Can you repeat your name? Yeah, I'm Yuri from Japan. And I, I was thinking the design that um, attracts people. <laughs> Japan, and uh, I worked mostly on like making the presentation, uh, the slides. 
uh, the soft push button. I basically designed the bot box with the UE. Uh, they also designed um, the middle um, presentation. Two quick questions. Number one, do you love your product? I really, really love this book. Good. Yeah. Question number two. Did you think about distribution channels? How are you going to sell this? And who are you going to sell it to? Are you going to have, you, you could just kind of quick answer this. Maybe you didn't think about it. Are you going to have an online store? Are you going to sell this to Staples? Are you going to sell it to Amazon or sell it on Amazon? I just want to know if you thought about that. Uh, well, uh, well I, actually, we didn't really think as but um, uh, what I got and put it in the slide was that uh, we should like uh, put it onto like uh, electronic place, uh, not really like a uh, place where they sell bags, uh, since this is uh, actually like how you're supposed to do that. Yeah, just, just, uh, okay. just put it in the electronic uh, place. You don't have to pick just one place. And that's what makes your business successful if you can sell it to this kind of company and this kind of distributor and this kind of uh, you know business that will brand it themselves, but they will pay you for the bag, you know? So you want to have multiple channels where you can sell. But great job, guys. Really good job. Thank you so much. My name is Shifra, I'm from Canada. My name is Matthew, I'm from New York. My name is Christoph, I'm from Hong Kong. My name is William, I'm from Hong Kong. My name is Marks, I'm from Poland. And we're Parism. So we're a group of... Okay, so we're, sorry. So we're a group of really passionate students who recognize that there are facilitatory courses such as online courses, YouTube tutorials, and articles that are aimed towards bridging the gap that the schooling system creates between itself and the students that it teaches. But our team does not believe that this process is being optimized. So the specific problem that we will target is that of massive open online courses that generally have a completion rate of as low as 10% to 13%. And it's funny, right? Because online courses are generally heralded as this amazing alternative to traditional education, but they also have a dropout rate of about 80% to 90%. So what's our solution? Purism. Purism aims to put back control into the hands of students and allow them to learn for learning's sake. So it uses a machine learning model that recommends courses that are individualized based on certain criterion that we will be happy to delve into with a question and answer site that is integrated into the platform itself. So we use data from cookies um, to recommend courses and then also third party APIs. So anything from edX, Coursera, et cetera, for the algorithm to basically become smarter and continue to recommend increasingly relevant courses that are specifically geared towards your personal profile. So in terms of monetization, we plan on, amongst other things, 
generating revenue off of acquiring and selling data to educational institutions and camps, much like um, our own. So our marketing and sales strategy includes content and search engine optimization and social media marketing. So our target audience is basically any student between the age of 16 to 23, and we found that they typically use either Instagram or YouTube, which is exactly what we're gonna be targeting through specific points of contact. Um, we also um, want to rely on offline marketing, so that includes anything from word of mouth to a student ambassador program, because speaking from personal experience, students will get involved in anything or just about anything that they can put on their LinkedIn profile. Um, so this is our revenue model. Um, we expect to have um, a 2,000 US dollar deficit on the first year, but at, at the third year, we would have 250,000 US dollars. I say again, 250 US dollars. So um, in looking, um, so we actually want to mention that with our startup, we actually looked at um, Facebook's own model. So Facebook basically sells its information for, I think, $20 per um, user per month. But obviously, we're a much smaller startup, and um, we don't have as many users. So the price that we suggested here is $1.5 per user per month. Next slide. So you may be wondering, why RT? People like to tackle education all the time. Like, everyone's super cynical about the education system. But the thing is, we live and breathe this problem. We are quite literally our own target demographic, and we represent global interests. As we mentioned before, I am Pakistani Canadian, he's from New York, these guys are from Hong Kong, we also have Poland. So Matthew here is like a very special case. So he actually took five years to learn how to program. And he could have easily streamlined that, um, that whole process through about two years, and then the remaining three years he could have actually done something useful, such as actually making friends. But, <laughs> um, but on a much serious note, why are we actually interested in this? What we're proposing is actually giving back students their educational autonomy, which is what we think that the current education system lacks, and actually to, uh, working towards doing what the government claims to want to do all the time, but fails spectacularly at delivering, because I'm not even gonna delve into the legalities because they're super, super, super extensive. Basically, we like to think that we are proposing the single biggest shift in the educational status quo since the industrial age because that's about the time since the model that we currently use hasn't been changed since. So actually, now we're going to go on to the actual demo, and um, Matthew here, our CTO, is going to be taking that away. Very okay, great. Technicalities. Yeah. Oh, sorry for technical issues. Right, so a lot of the information they already know. So we can use the existing video 
doing now with technology to find out the parts that are rel relevant to the actual user. And that's it. <coughs> um, before we move on, I want to mention that for our first iteration, we have a special shout out to Max. So he's from Poland, and basically he stayed up, functioning off of about two and a half cans of Red Bull. Um, and for 36 hours, he was up contacting about 120 people in Poland. And then Christoph and I actually, just in terms of market research, we actually got to talk to about 25 people face to face. And the reason I'm saying this is because someone very close to us, a mentor that we hold very dear, told to, said to us that if you're not changing something about your first iteration every time you speak to your customer, you're doing something wrong. So we actually went in and we got some really interesting feedback that we think we're gonna incorporate around the second quarter of 2019, which is if our proposed timeline follows when we'll be launching the first and the second iterations. It's basically basically going to incorporate the peer-to-peer um, -peer learning network in where it's a question and answer site that's integrated to the platform itself. So the narrative around online courses is that um, they don't offer the actually interactive bit. So in school, you have your teacher, you can talk to them whenever. Online courses don't offer always offer that. So we want to change that by actually allowing you to connect with students that are taking the same or similar courses as you are. Congratulations. I love the energy that you have on this. It means you really want to do it and we will follow to check if you are going to do it. Huh? because this is what you're pitching to us now. Uh, I want to ask you, um, you said you talked to 100 plus uh, 20, 30, 40 people. So what were they saying? What, did, what do they like about this? What did you ask them? Okay. Um, so basically we had 62 answers on surveys that, we, uh, that I marketed on different websites on Facebook. And we had 56 personal call, phone call interviews that were live. And so our, yeah. yes, and this is our basic market, market research. So from all of these answers, we can con conclude four most important facts. Uh, first of all, that most of our target groups, uh, most of our target group people use actually internet courses. And that m most of those who use them are very dissatisfied with this and that actually college, university, and graduate students have bigger problems than high school students. And that basically when I asked them whether they would use such a platform, they exploded with enthusiasm and happiness, about 86% of them, exactly, so. We also find it very important to mention that this, um, this slide is specifically um, the online research that he conducted, so with people across Europe. Christoph and I actually did the face-to-face -face, um, interviews that are not actually on here because a lot of times they were vague because customers don't know what they want. But the feedback we got again and again is that they wanted like a calendar system and they wanted a specific level of interaction. So not all of our customers knew exactly how they wanted that, but they really wanted to be able to connect with people across these platforms. And yeah, so like Quora, if anyone knows what that is, um, that's essentially what something like that. We, we try to integrate that. That is specifically geared towards online courses into our platform. Congratulations, that was amazing. I know how hard you all work, and you already know that I love this. So the question, like, rather than ask questions about what you created, because I want to have a conversation with you later about it, I want to ask, how did you feel about working together as different cultures, different parts of the world, you all brought something so important to your project, but tell me about the behind the scenes. Um, behind the scenes was, you know, harder, <laughs> I'd say, yeah, at some point, especially, um, you know, past 12 a.m. We all fell asleep at about 5 a.m. last yeah, night. Yeah, but, um, no, I think, personally, it was a great experience. Um, we all have, we all come from our own respective um, schooling systems, uh, cultural backgrounds, uh, we were all able to integrate this, um, these, these two with their amazing, I guess, uh, extracurriculars in terms of pitching, and, you know, hackathons and everything, um, and just our general input um, really helped overall uh, in creating this app because this is essentially, we are essentially our own demographic, like, you know, what's going on. So um, we have emailed like all our, all our individual schools and they have all replied that they would be really satisfied and really glad to actually host our academic demo yeah. for our schools. 
Better than e like a like a two hundred word email. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Uh, and you know the oh go ahead Matt. Yeah yeah just to ask. So I have so in here there's actually a, a system called the specialized school system which has over uh, I, I believe like ten thousand students. So uh, we're also planning on uh, implementing those sort of scenarios. All right. Wonderful. I, the reason I wanted to ask that question for the audience is I know that half of the students in here have not gotten to this point yet. And I think some of you learned that, you know, the problems that happen on your team in the background are normal, but this is the kind of team you want to emulate. So take the opportunity, I know you guys are in different camps doing this stuff, but take the opportunity to observe this, see how they connect together and ask them questions. Let them do a little mentoring for you all, okay? Great job. Thank you. My name is Daniel. My name is Howdy. My name is Harry. My name is Tango from Japan. I meet Harry. He's a Chinese middle school student. <laughs> he is uh, high pressure on his uh, on his grades. So his mom enrolled him uh, a lot of uh, extracurricular classes. And so an extracurricular class is, is two hours long. And uh, at, if you add the time travel on the road, you know, it is like five hours. So it wastes a lot of time. And, and it's also expensive. So the some expensive classes are like 900 yuan. So, and also you have to carry a lot of books. So that's also inconvenient. <coughs> So, uh, so we'll make an online studying app that have videos and tests. To help learning, we also have AI smart online tests with individual performance analysis and learning representation from AI. Uh, now, Harry's feel happy. We want to set China, China as our beachhead marketing market because eco, extracurricular classes are very common in China. In China, they are uh, very common, very common in China. Oh? In China, there are about 200 million peop people just like Harry. We want to set mass as our beachhead market because there are less competitors, although we will publicize in the digital channel, but after uh, digital publicity, people will find out that our app have low prices and high efficiency, so people will tell other people about our app.
have we have the same uh, goals as our competition our competitor, but we have low lower price and higher efficient uh, efficient efficiency. We have AI to help learning and extract people's attention. Our AI, our price can be higher, but uh, but if but if our AI is efficient, then there will be a lot of people who want to use this app. Competition. We have the AR Smart online test to support learning. Uh, have a look at our competitors. Xue R Xi Pei Yu Xi Pei Yu takes up the teacher's time when the students are working. Uh, in Nike's open class, it is often difficult to find the video which is most suitable for your needs. Uh, by Sijan are only useful for the students who are good at self-study. Here is the prediction. At the beginning, we need one hundred thousand dollars to advertise and two hundred thousand dollars to develop software, including AI, and forty thousand dollars for developing videos and tests. So we need total $340 for answer interesting. The price for single video is 0.5 Chinese yen. The price for single test paper with question is 10 Chinese yen. A normal user will buy 20 tests and 50 videos. The 225 Chinese yen. Another user will buy 350 340 Chinese yen of videos per year. So if there are 200,000 users, we can earn 62.8 million dollars per year. All right, thank you so much. identified at the beginning is not actually Harry being sad, it's Harry's mom forcing him to go to all these extra classes that he doesn't want to go to. So my question is, how are you going to convince the Harry's mom of this in this story that this app is a good idea and it's and not and that Harry's mom shouldn't keep forcing Harry to go to other classes? Harry has my idea. Anyone can answer, it doesn't have to be Harry. Whatever you want. So is Harry buying this, or is Harry's is Harry's mom buying? There is my mom buying. Okay. Yes. So your your stress level and your pain. <laughs> you're going to convince your mom to buy it, or is are you guys going to market directly to moms? Because Chinese uh, to go. Chinese test is too hard. Yeah. And every people need to uh, have back this my mother's life. Uh -huh. And uh, 
some uh, some students are think it's very boring. I they don't like this. So some uh, so some parents like my my mother well. Do a happy dance up here, Harry. <laughs> so, actually, so actually, you touched on my question, which is, what is the price point for this app? I saw your other numbers there, but how much is that app for each download? So, how much does Harry's mom have to pay to have access to these lessons for him? Oh, no, it's free. It's free. It's free. How are you making your money? You can buy stuff inside the app. So you will be uh, be uh, talking to all of these companies that are there on the market and you will ask them to put the, the app? Or? Uh, no, there is two parts. First part is test. Yes. Uh, it, uh, it can be free. No. Japan. I'm Angel from China. So, 
So today we are going to introduce you our pull tap, the angel runner. <laughs> <laughs> but before explaining your app, I want to ask you guys questions. Who has wanted to, um, who uh, like wish to start running every day or do push ups every day? Like, who wanted to do it every day? Because we have. Like, yeah, right? Yeah. And now, uh, if you, did you guys, did, are you guys continuing doing this? And yeah, no, that's a totally different question, and we, I experienced it before, he has, Takumi here, um, has went to the gym before, but after a month, he doesn't have time, so he quit it. Um, so, okay, for the next. So the problem we want to solve is not being able to continue workout. Um, WHO announced that more than um, 330 million people are considered obese, and that's more than three times the number of people in Japan. And it's a really big number. Oh wait, no, no, no. And we, sorry. and we believe that many people actually try to solve this problem. So like, as you guys said, you guys are trying to do push-ups or running every day. But the real problem is that you can't continue doing this. Now. Sorry. <laughs> okay, so, okay, so why exercise? I mean, like, it's obvious that you should exercise and like everyone tells us you should exercise, but why? Okay, so the first um, reason will be that exercise benefits um, your body. And, um, and actually, exercising benefits every part of your body, including the mind. And exercising causes um, chemicals that can help a person feel good. And, um, and it could help people sleep better. And, well, and lower the risk of diseases like... Um, and, and the third one is obviously look better. And yes, so wait, no, and this is where the app comes in handy. <coughs> Angel Runner, yay! <laughs> yay. 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 <laughs> um, our target audience, um, it could be any from a grandpa that um, wants to start running to a um, teenager that, um, to a teenager. And the gender, it could be both male and female. Um, like, um, like the interview I just asked, um, they were both boys and girls raising their hands. And the situation, um, but if I were to choose one person, um, like um, a college student, let's say 22, a girl, and she just said from her, um, and her boyfriend just said, did you get that? And, <laughs> and so she was really shocked, and she wished to solve this problem. And she found this app, a really wonderful one, called the Angel Runner. And what we will use is a pedometer and a gyro sensor. And don't, don't worry, they're both um, already in our phone, so we don't need to worry about them. Um, wait, actually, like, who doesn't have a pedometer in their phone? Yeah, I, I searched it, but like, yeah, good, good, okay. And in this app, you could earn coins. For, um, you can earn points. Like let's say um, 10 points for every mile you run, or 10 points for um, every 10 push-ups you do. But hey, what are these points? And what makes our app so unique from the different apps? And the answer to this is, we're gonna use blockchain. Um, yes, um, so not only you could um, grow your angels um, with these tokens, you can exchange them with healthy things in real life. For example, vegetables are health equipment. <laughs> and so you're gonna run a healthy vegetable, you're gonna run, and it's gonna be a really good healthy cycle. And wait, oh wait, yes, sir. Um so you guys could you guys might wonder why we're gonna use um bitcoins or blockchains or cryptocurrency. Um actually um um I live in Japan right now, but I've never used a, like a Bitcoin before. And well I've heard of it, but I actually didn't know like what they were like and I learned it in this class in future hand. And I was really interested, and I really wish to um, use it. I really wish to use it in our product. Okay, the profit we're gonna make. Okay, um, well first of all, our app is going to be completely free. You know, you don't need any money to install it. So, it means that we're gonna use Google Ads to earn our profit. Um, like any other free app, the advertisement will be the main profit we're gonna make. Um, there are other apps that use um, um, 
he fell under, and I, I searched them. And I actually took an interview um, to like 40 people. But, um, like, yeah, um, like 70% of them said they either don't have their, they either don't have the pedometer app in their phones or they erased it. And, I mean, plus, you can search through the Google, um, Google Play or App Store, but you'll, you won't be able to find an app that uses um, cryptocurrency and a pedometer at the same time. And our app application is totally unique and wonderful. And I, and out of the 40 people we interviewed, 80% um, said that the they're okay with putting inside our app is it's free. So we thought that um, free is a really important keyword. Um, you know, like, if it costs like even two dollars, and like, actually my mom and dad are really strict, and they won't let me put in apps. And even if it so like if it's like two dollars or it costs money, they will just say like no. Actually, and. Um, but if it's free, um, my mom and dad said I could put it in if, after they see it. So I think free is a really important part. Yeah. Next, um, and the advertisements. Again, we're going to use Google Ads. And the second one is that, um, so the 40 people and the 80%, so we're going to have them, uh, so after we put on the app store, I'm really sure it's going to be, um, um, everyone will want to try it out because it's free, and like I'm sure, like they'll ne they've never heard of a an app that you could earn vegetables by running, and I'm sure it's gonna be yeah. And I'm sure it's gonna be a really uh, great app. Okay, and that's yeah. And last but not least, the prototype. Um, we actually made the um, prototype. We don't have time right now, so sorry, I, I can't show you it, but. Um, the screen is so going to look like this, and this is the starting screen, if you press it, you're going to um, you're gonna be able to put your name, your sex, your weight, your height, and then keep it start. And then it's going to show like um, the distance you're in, your goal, the time, and keep it up. And, okay, wait, no, oh, wait, and, okay, so we believe that exercising is really crucial for human beings, and it could even affect how, when you're going to die. So I think you're gonna, you should be very careful exercising and I, if I make this app, I'm gonna use it like every day. Thank you for listening.
Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. reliable, safe, safety driver, right? So um, now, have you ever dreamed about partying with the driver? <laughs> right? So, Acro, luxury and wheels. So uh, we first want you to meet our team, who you may be working with. So the flags represent the places uh, that, we'll, that we have been most influenced by, um, yeah, most influenced by. I'm, I'm Chris Carrillo, um, I'm the hustler. Where are you from? I'm from Ecuador. I'm Kenny Shinji from Japan, and I'm the hustler who has lost his smartphone twice <laughs> in this boot camp. My name is Saki, I'm from Japan, and I'm hipster. I'm a, I like problems, you know? I'm just like this. They're easy to solve. <laughs> so, um, uh, I want to talk to you about a problem. Um, the future is a problem. More accurately, people not being prepared for the future. You know, it's estimated in five to seven years, uh, the uh, self-driving technology and the self-driving cars are, are gonna be the norm. But now, the problem is, how will these cars be in the future? The industry, of course, it will change, but, um, but, uh, sorry, um, they'll have the same boring service, you know. It's uh, an estimated 75% uh, uh, of uh, present um, car, car transportation services are given to the driver, and the, the service itself only takes 25%. So what will happen in the future if they acquire this technology? They will take the 100%, but still provide the same boring service. That sucks. Um, so what we wanna do is we wanna take an advantage of this change and we want to provide a new uh, transportation service. We want to create, we want to innovate. We want to create something that present and future transportation services would not be able to provide to the customers. So, like I said, I'm the most problematic of the group. You'll be, be uh, better off with my partner Saki explaining the solution. Okay, since cars and potential future um, services are not transportation service might be able to provide the same kind of service that we're thinking now. We need the investment now to be the first um, team to disrupt the market of the self-driving car business. Our innovation includes the implementation of AI. Uh, we've developed an app that my team will now show you. Um, this, um, this app analyzes and manages your schedule by syncing up with your um, calendar app in your phone that everyone has. So when you enter your schedule, AI will like automatically um, organize the ride for you, just for you, um, to where you want to go and the um, exact date and at the exact time. It can even pick up your partner beforehand. Um, it will significantly change people's norms. Imagine, um, imagine the first morning turning into a bright, happy start of the day by knowing you'll be picked up by someone um, uh, at 
the best timing, which is uh, between where you, uh, when you have to, when you won't be late to your job, but you can sleep as much as you can. Um, it can even wake you up if, it, if you forgot to put your alarm on by controlling your alarm within your phone so you don't have to worry about being late. Then imagine even more. It will be always ready to be, provide you with your warm breakfast, with your um, favorite coffee, and a comfortable workplace. At the same time, driving to your company so that you will never waste your time. Now I give my words to Kenny. Okay, so um, to in order to learn and understand the current market, uh, we have conducted a research asking uh, what improvements should be made uh, in the current uh, car-based transportation services, which 51 uh, participants have answered. Um, and from all the answers, we categorize all the answers into three groups. Uh, the one of them is entertainment, the others are the drivers and the fees. Um, we also categorize the uh, participants into three groups, the business executives, high-class people, and the general public. Um, Oh, the yellow part in the middle is shows that um, the all three types of people are wanting to the percentage of all three types of people are wanting to solve um, all the problems. And uh, because the high class people are really uh, rich and have a lot of money, uh, we decided to target them as a target audience. And also because um, high class um, in the high class people, uh, they answered entertainment the entertainment the most. Uh, we also decided to um, put effort into enhancing um, entertainment in the app. And this became one of the reasons why we decided to first enhance the theme of party. Okay. So in other words, we are going, uh, we are targeting rich party. Um, <laughs> in this theme, we would prepare huge televisions and many delicious foods. Not only can it provide entertainment in Acro for the upper class people, uh, but it is also an unexplored market for the current transportation service. Uh, therefore, we decided to work on this thing. Um, so, right, I just wanted to, to get an idea. We're talking about people that have so much influence on social media. You guys know this, Snapchat, Instagram. They literally text 10 people, those 10 people text 10 other people, and in a span of an hour, you got a thousand people party. This is who we're targeting, fast, real money. Okay, so next. Um, after gaining profit from that, we will then um, move on to uh, uh, operating the theme of work, um, which we will set when commu um, people commuting. For example, we could prepare um, coffees and all those uh, hot uh, breads so that um, they could eat uh, while commuting. Um, we, uh, the reason why we have uh, made this theme is because um, uh, it, is, it has a high demand as People uh, commute every day. And we have also thought of expanding our theme and uh, made the family theme, since the upper class people like to uh, spend their time with the children. Uh, now passing to Chris. Thank you. Um, so you're probably thinking, how are we going to do this, right? So um, fo uh, focusing on our competition, um, they, our competition basically targets the general public. So uh, higher class um, people are basically unexplored market. They literally have nothing against us. So we'll, we'll easily overcome these companies by adding improvements and futuristic technologies. So again, using our different uh, connections that we have around the world, we, uh, we're targeting the luxurious market. Um, making them have a good impression of us is the best, is the key. So how are we going? We deploy our ground connections. So like I say, we ask them to party. They text 10 other people, those 10 people that text 10 other people, and you're an hour, you had a huge party. So the demographic recognizes us, the demographic use our services. Again, with social media, it's literally free advertising. The demographic will brand our services on social media. And with that, we can broaden our service and expand to the work and family team. And, and since Acro is a completely new, um, different service from other companies, it will be um, a reimagined service, luxury catering and service. Acro, luxury and wheels. Thank you.
I get top left. Yeah. Okay, okay, I won't yell now. Great job, guys. Love the suit, Kristoff. You look very sharp. Crystal ball, but thank you. Yes. What's that? Crystal ball. Like crystal like ball. ball. Oh my gosh, I'm sorry. It's crystal ball. Crystal ball. Crystal ball. Um, you look the part to sell to your target market, which is exactly what you need to do. So good job. Thanks. I'm curious, uh, maybe I missed the numbers in here somehow. You know, how? What? what's the price for this? If you're gonna get me Starbucks coffee, Starbucks coffee and, you know, high quality breakfast from another place, and I just get to roll into work like that, you know, that takes time. So, and I don't know how a self-driving car can get coffee. I'm curious about that, but all these parts and pieces kind of fit into a bigger picture that's gonna cost a lot of money. So how much is your service? And I have a second question. First one, how much is your service? How did you find the price? Second question is, what about liability? You are transporting people in a vehicle. So who is accepting liability for that? Are you paying for additional insurance? You understand? Okay. Thank you very much for the question. Um, first of all, um, the, we, we, are, we want to be a transparent uh, company. We'll have the same fee for the, for, um, we'll, we'll not change fees, you know, how common present day uh, service companies do when it's rainy, when there's like a, a lot of uh, service they do. And that's annoys, that annoys customers, we don't want that. We want to be transparent. We will have the same fee, but of course, if you ask for more money, uh, more food, it will cost more money. And the thing is, um, the beauty of it, it's in the future, right? So. The self driving car is not gonna, it's gonna, not gonna like actually take the food, but gonna go through, and the actual workers from there will benefit from us, from us, us because they want to sell more, and this will be at a higher price, so they want, they will also um, get a higher profit. They will literally just put it in the car. It will be waiting for you when you arrive, right? So it will pick you up with the food already. You all you need to do is eat and enjoy. Yeah. Uh, first question. Second question. We are currently working on that, um, but. Uh, what we can say is that, of course, you're gonna agree to a lot of um, terms, and within that, take care of yourself. But in the future, this this technology must be top of the notch. Like the legislation will not pass if the self-driving car are not almost perfect, because nobody wants to get people, right? So the legislation will not pass. So we're waiting for that. We're anticipating the market. We want to be ready for it. So when it comes, boom, boom. That's a smart thing to do. Very good, great job. I think actually something that to me, what was uh, interesting, um, I think you chose, uh, you made a good choice about the target audience, but I was wondering why are you actually limiting your opportunities with this and just focusing only on the party part? Because there are many other things you could be doing and I understand this is something that maybe these people don't have, but wouldn't you be making more money and also serving more clients, serving a better service to you if you do the other things, or we start, you start with the other things? So thank you, that is actually a uh, true value point. We debated this for a long time, but so we're a startup. We're, you know, start small, uh, be big, you know? Um, so. Right now, we just want to build revenue, but in the f near future, we would like um, to open to the public. But right now, the competition is too high, so literally, they would just or buy us off or kill us. So it doesn't work like that. So what we're planning to do is stay in luxury um, as long as we can to make more profit, make more revenue, and then expand our business from there. That's really cool, great idea, guys. Uh, my my question is just this. Uh, so I used to be in an industry trying to make flying cars, so I like cool futuristic vehicles, like self-driving cars and whatnot. Cool. But I don't quite understand why you need the self-driving piece to make this work, and that seems like a huge hurdle compared to just you know using Uber and having them bring you food in your Uber. True, but that's the innovation part, right? Um, these people that are target audience to bring with, they wanna flex, you know? They literally wanna impress people. Their whole life is based upon keeping their social status. That's why they have so many followers, they literally uh, you know Kim Kardashian, like she, you know how much, she has a team for her captions, for her photos. 
they, we're talking people like this, people who, again, like the common term, want to flex. They want to be like Snapchatting with the, oh my god, we have no driver. Look, we're partying in the, the car, there's no driver. Like, literally, look at the wheel spin with no driver. They want to do that. So we're providing that in the near future. Just All to right, make it cool. Thank literally. You. Greeting everybody. Uh, uh. Okay. <laughs> so greeting everybody. So we are biochars. My name is Tomo from Japan. I'm Saad from Pakistan. I'm Yoshi from Japan. And I'm Alex from Shanghai. So the program biochars is aimed for uh, to profit, not to profit. Yeah, non-profit organization, but it's aimed to uh, take the villages of South Asia to help them to like take a step farther to into the world of modernize, modernization.
So that was a video we just actually interviewed them like a few days ago. So their like, actual opinion of, of the problems. So let me go over the problems that we are solving with the program. So the first one is less electricity and no gas, bad fertilizer, and bad health. So let me just go over briefly. The less electricity means, as in the video, uh, people do not get electricity for like 18 hours a day. They basically just get six or six or less than six hours of electricity. Electricity and no gas. They do not have gas. And bad fertilizer. They actually use like really cheap chemical ones to grow the plant faster, so they can get money out of it. But it actually kills the soil eventually, and the soil will not be able to hold the plant anymore. So the number of deaths per year from the cow dung sitting, sitting, sitting there, um, sitting there for like long time, and that brings diseases. The number of deaths is a uh, hundred thousand people actually die from the disease from the cow dung, and actually just leave the cow dung on the ground and like for like long term that causes like uh, greenhouse gases, which is gonna cause the pollution in the air. So our solution is really simple, using like common technology. The process is we're gonna collect the cow dung and gen uh, ex ex extract the, the gas and generate electricity out of it. And we're gonna actually get the electricity free back to the village who gave us the cow dung and uh, the leftover can be organic fertilizer, organic fertilizer, and that's what we are selling. And my teammate is going to dive into the numbers of the money. So, so, so this is our financial aspect. We can all the estimate calculations. As you can see, our setting up cost is totally 380,000 euros. And our landing cost per year is total fifty five thousand dollars and revenue which is from selling fertilizer is yearly five hundred and forty seven thousand five hundred dollars. <coughs> We're gonna write the bank and we can share it payback within one year, less than one year. So these are costs for a single plant. Now Pakistan has thousands of villages, actually twenty five thousand and each of them generate about this much of electricity, this much of waste by their cattle or the livestock they actually have in their home. Uh, I have actually talked to one of uh, the people of a village and we actually uh, uh, started the arrangements to set up a plant in their village. Uh, So we actually, we actually got one village to actually start this project and they agreed on it. So we are so excited to actually start up this program and we are not aiming to like earn a billion dollars, but we, we believe that we can make an impact on billion people. Thank you. Thank you. You guys did an excellent job. Uh, the video really helped to tell the story. So you're not talking about something, you're, you're showing it. I love this, and I think you're absolutely right. This could go around the whole world. 25,000 villages just in Pakistan. Pakistan is one of probably 150 countries who could easily benefit from this right now. Um, I'm, I'm curious about a few things, but mostly, do you do you guys really want to do this? I know you have some resources to do this, Saad. I want to encourage you to take it very, very seriously and just do it. I've actually talked to a couple of people to start researching and get the numbers. 
Good, good. This is, um, this is such a, a great example when we were talking about circular economies, but also doing something that's so eco-necessary, not just eco-friendly, but eco-necessary. Um, it, it solves disease, it solves lack of power, it solves you know, the, the, the fact that these villages are, are dangerous places for anybody to be, let alone live. Um, so I, I want to thank you because you're one of the few groups who took on a social issue. And anytime I see something like that, I just want to add my voice to say, I hope you do this. I want you to stay in touch because I want to be supportive in whatever way I can to make this happen. And congratulations for doing something to make the world a better place. Great job, guys. Uh, congratulations also on my behalf because I would like to emphasize how important it is nowadays that when you think of your business opportunities, you connect them to something that really makes a lot of impact for other people. So this is one way you can look at it, but it's also an incredible opportunity, not just to make money, but also to change the lives of the people and to, uh, to leave another trace uh, for them, you know, to, to, to prove their help. I know that there are some other initiatives like this that are uh, doing all of this. So my suggestion would be that you would uh, try to connect with them. Did you, did you check what is in the area? And maybe you can work together in making this more uh, scalable and like a big awareness and, and in a way empower the villagers themselves to try to improve their lives. So uh, I think this is one of the, the, yeah. the ways uh, maybe also we can contribute if, uh, uh, if you stay in touch. This, this addresses multiple uh, UN Sustainable Development Goals. Yeah. I would have loved for you guys to put that up there because this is also something that you can look at. Who are the other organizations and agencies around the world who are trying to address similar things? And you don't have to worry about competition because the need is so big. But your opportunity here is to find the other organizations and, and companies who are doing this and finding the, the cheapest, most efficient, most eco-friendly ways to do this. Partner with Ask how can we expand your efforts here in you know my country or my part of the world. So I have actually, if you talk about the research, I have actually talked to an organization in our city, Karachi, it's called Pakistan Science Forum, and they've actually done this, but in a, in a small level. So they actually know what what the technology, how it's the methods yeah. behind it. Good. So I'm planning on working with them because I have connections with them too. And. Just another thing to add, the gas part. We currently use natural gas which comes out of the ground. This, from this process, we're actually creating enough gas to gen from one village to generate three villages. So we left with two thirds of the gas. Now we can sell that gas to cities and that to those specific villages. So we stop using that natural gas. Can you, can you explain a bit more about how the technology works in terms of you know how you're converting the cow dung into electricity? Well, actually, I have a video. All right. Yes. <laughs> Videos are always good. Now at the same time, it eliminates 
another major factor, which is health. When the cow is, is left stranded in the house, that's like, it wasn't like really deeply explained. <laughs> That was amazing, everybody. I know that you guys have stayed up all hours. I know this is uh, a pitch in uh, your second language or your third language even. Um, it would be incredibly difficult for any of us to imagine like pitching in a, a, another language um, and memorizing things and, um, and working with people like, 
literally every single member of your team is from a different country, and trying to put it, by the way, they pulled it all together in the last four days, okay, because we had a lot of um, mindset, curriculum, and everything else, so that they, you know, we're, we're not here just to get them to do this pitch, okay? We're here to prepare them for the rest of their lives so that their mind, um, it, as, you know, is, is, is they're thinking like an entrepreneur, okay? They're thinking um, with a growth mindset and, and really um, uh, having all the skills to, um, you know, to, to be successful for the rest of their lives. And um, you know, having public speaking skills, having uh, teamwork skills like this, and you know, throwing them into the deep end because, like, how do you just get together in four days with people from four other countries, five other countries, and uh, and pitch something in, in another language? Like, try that one. <laughs> and trying to agree. And trying to agree. Right. They actually had to agree on the idea as well. It's not like we gave them an idea to do. They had to agree on an idea. Everybody had um, their own ideas that, that they came in with. So, um, I, you know, this was, I, I, I'm so proud of you guys. that I have done this with teenagers. I did it for six years and it took us about four and a half months. And like I told you, those teenagers all went to school together, they knew each other, they could go you know, to a <laughs> restaurant after school together and do work. I am beyond impressed. The language barriers, the cultural barriers, you guys are so phenomenal and I want to give you, remind you, that I, myself, I didn't tell anybody, I was focused on you when I introduced myself. Um, I, right now, have a uh, free online virtual classroom using Facebook where I have 15 mentors from around the world. They are literally called mentor teachers who are already, meaning they are ready right now to help you. So if you haven't joined Amy Carrier's classroom on Facebook, please do. They are watching all of these pitches today, so that means every single one of you has been broadcasted live today on Facebook, and I recommend that each of you download this and then cut out just your pitch to save it for yourself. You can all use your pitch as part of your college applications, as part of your virtual portfolios that you're creating. This is a fantastic resource. Cut out Joseph's intro at the beginning, his great cheerleading. No, I mean use it. Like, use his intro, then just your your 10 minute pitch, then Joseph's congratulations and, and good job at the end. Put a nice cover on it, save it, use it in your virtual por portfolio, guys. It's there for you to use and take advantage of all the resources that exist for you. All of the adults who can mentor you, most of them don't even know that they could or they should, so you just need to ask. But like I said, I've got 15 ready and waiting and excited, and they all teach one hour a week, each, each week in the virtual classroom. So if you have no idea what I'm talking about, just come up to me afterwards. But thank you all for your phenomenal efforts, and thank you, Joseph and team and fellow judges. This was so cool. This is like my favorite thing ever. You guys are awesome. All right, we're, um, we're gonna get some lunch very soon, so I know you guys have worked so hard, and, uh, and I'm sure you're very hungry, just like I am. And, um, and then we're gonna celebrate later on tonight. So congratulations, thank you so much to everyone.